have a, a statement to offer, uh, but I won't be discussing the case or answering any questions about this case. I'll remind everybody that uh, there is an affidavit that's been posted on our website, uh, the sheriff's website, which is scsdonline.com, and it's posted for download right on our uh, homepage. Um, I want to start by uh, offering our condolences to the Kaufman family, to Corey's father. Uh, this has been uh, a long three-year investigation uh, into the death and homicide of Corey Kaufman. And as you know, homicide investigations are very difficult. They're very complex. They take time. Uh, and as you can see by uh, the chiefs and my colleagues who stand with us, uh, this was a multi-agency effort. Uh, and we are pleased with the results of today's arrests, and we hope to serve justice for the Kaufman family. On April the 2nd, 2012, Corey Allen Kaufman was reported missing by his stepfather, Kevin Lee Pickett, with whom he'd been living. Kaufman was last seen at the residence of his best friend, Mike Cooley, who also lived in Turlock. Kaufman was supporting his family by scrapping, uh, which is a slang term used to describe activity related to metal theft and other property crime as a means to make money. On August 19, 2013, human remains, later confirmed to be Kaufman, were located in a remote area of Mariposa County. I want to thank and acknowledge Detective Sherry Hendricks of the Mariposa County Sheriff's Office for her diligence and tenacity in this case. If it were not for her investigative efforts, we may not have been able to make an arrest in this case. In April of 2012, a task force of investigators was formed to investigate the disappearance of Corey Kaufman. Due to the location he was last known to be and where he was last known to be going, the jurisdiction could have been the city of Turlock or the unincorporated area of Turlock policed by the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office. Both agencies worked together to form what was to become a much larger team. From the beginning of this investigation, the Sheriff's Office enlisted the help of several other allied agencies, including the District Attorney's Office, the Modesto Police Department, the Ceres Police Department, the Turlock Police Department, the Mariposa County Sheriff's Office, and other allied agency resources as needed. This also included those law enforcement agencies who assisted us today in the execution of search and arrest warrants in this case, those agencies include the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office, the Manteca Police Department, the Department of Justice, and the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. The task force has worked together since 2012 in order to see that justice is served, culminate, I'm sorry, culminating in today's arrests and execution of search warrants. And again, uh, even though the affidavit is out, uh, we arrested uh, Frank Carson today for, uh, for murder. His wife, Georgia uh, DiFilippo, for murder. Christina DiFilippo, his daughter, uh, for conspiracy and accessory uh, to murder. The Atwal brothers, the business owners in Turlock, uh, Daljeet and Baljeet Atwal, for murder. Walter Wells, for murder. Scott McFarlane, for conspiracy and accessory. Uh, to commit murder, Eduardo Quintanar again for conspiracy and an accessory to murder, and finally Robert Woody for homicide and conspiracy. Again, this is a very difficult case, and uh, I want to now introduce to you uh, the district attorney here in Stanislaus County, Birgit Flatiger. Good afternoon. Uh, I would just like to echo the sheriff's comments. Uh, on two particular points. One is that we will not be taking questions to discuss specifics of the investigation or the case. And secondarily, I'd like to express my gratitude to all the various agencies that worked very well together on this very lengthy investigation. Uh, it took a lot of work, it took a lot of time, uh, and uh, it has finally come together. Uh, for those who are interested, we have been receiving some inquiries about when we will be filing charges and what we will be filing. Uh, that will be made public uh, by Tuesday, uh, and that would likely be the court date for the arraignments on the individuals. The complaint will be made public at that time uh, and not prior to that time. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the uh, Commissioner of the California Highway Patrol, Commissioner Joe Farrow. Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, uh, I'm here, uh, saddened by the news. 
that has been revealed here this afternoon. Um, the California Highway Patrol is a very proud organization. Uh, it values and integrity is uh, uh, beyond the description at times, and to hear news like this is, is devastating to our organization. I can tell you that uh, Officer Wells is, is no longer employed by the department. McFarland and Quintanar are on administrative leave. They're off right now uh, without their peace officer powers as we go through the uh, complexities of the administrative investigation. But I wanted to tell you this, and the reason why I wanted to come here today is that obviously uh, news like this impacts uh, our organization. I think it impacts uh, all of American law enforcement. It, it just kind of rips at the, the soul of an organization. Uh, it's not what we stand for. It's so far beyond what any organization stands for. Uh, to learn that you have employees in an organization like ours that have uh, some involvement, uh, any involvement, or any knowledge uh, of a murder is, is, is devastating. Uh, I too would like to uh, uh, give my sincere condolences to Corey Kaufman's family. Can't even imagine what news like this uh, does to, to their family and friends. And I mean that very, very sincerely, uh, our, our condolences from the entire organization. But at the same time, one of the reasons why I wanted to come here is not just to talk about the obvious uh, issue about being uh, devastated and, and sad when you, when you learn something like this, but at the same time, uh, stand up here and be proud of the law enforcement profession. And to be up here and stand up here and be uh, just gleaming with, with pride. And the reason I say that is that, you know, this is a, this is a three-year-old case. And uh, these investigators, these agencies, uh, this Sheriff's Department along with the District Attorney's Office and many, many agencies, uh, they never gave up. Uh, they continued to work this investigation and had many, many, many challenges and complexities. And they worked this case through exhaustion and they never gave up even though it became extremely difficult. And I think that's important for all of us to realize is that the foundation of law enforcement is good and that it's pure and that men and women work extraordinarily hard to bring justice and what they are doing here today is they're bringing justice to the Kaufman family and I think that's really really important uh, for people to realize. And I'd close my, my introductory comments by just saying this is that right now today uh, our department is, is wounded from, this, from, the, from the viewpoint that this is damaging to, to everybody. But I wanted to tell you that there are 11,000 men and women out there. Many of them are working today. Uh, they're honest, hardworking, they're good people. They're, they're good police officers, they have good values, and they're doing a very, very difficult job out there right now. Uh, they are learning about this incident as we speak. Uh, I made it a point to notify all of them that are on duty uh, right now, they are learning as, as the public is learning. Uh, they are, I would imagine, they are devastated. Uh, they're very saddened by the news. But they have to continue to work. And, uh, and I fully support them out there right now, and I hope you do too. I hope the public does. I hope they realize that uh, these events, uh, while very, very, very sad, uh, they're rare. Um, but we should all be proud that law enforcement will do what they have to do. They will bring justice to the forefront. That's what's been done in this case, but we need to continue to support those that are still out there uh, doing this job uh, with the professional integrity that we all so desire. Um, I have a few minutes. If you have uh, some questions that you would like to ask specifically about uh, the California Hive Patrol or the, the investigators, I would leave questions or that uh, specific about the case to the district attorney's office or the sheriff's office, but if you do have questions about uh, my department, I will take this right now. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Can you say what division uh, these three CHP officers uh, were working from with the Merced? Uh, Merced and Modesto, and they're assigned to what we call the Central Division that runs from uh, Modesto down to Bakersfield, and they're in two commands here in the Central Division office. Did they work together? Uh, two of them did, and one was in a different command. I believe it was Wells and McFarland were in one uh, command and uh, Quintanar was in the other. Did they know each other? Yes. Why, why were um, the chief placed on administrative leave and the other was in the law 
Officer Wells was, uh, uh, is no longer employed in this department for conduct outside of what you're hearing about today. And the other two are on administrative leave because the criminal investigation always takes priority over the admin. And so we waited for the criminal investigation to be done and then we automatically uh, began the, ad the admin investigation. Are they in custody? Yes. Where? Uh, I believe they're, they're here in the Stanislaw County Jail. And specifically, and feel free to look back towards the camera, specifically what are the charges against them? Uh, the what charges against Wells are for uh, participation in murder, and the other two are obstruction of justice and conspiracy. Okay. Anywhere well, in that paperwork, and there's a lot of it, is it made clear who the actual gunman is or suspected of it? I'd refer those those uh, to the uh, the sheriff's and the DA. I, I can tell you this. The affidavit is out there. I have not read the full contents of that. I've been briefed at, at length, um, but I'm not uh, uh, intimately familiar with everything inside that affidavit. Okay. Okay. All right, ladies Thank and gentlemen, that's going to conclude our press conference for today. Um, we'll give a moment for the uh, for speakers to excuse themselves.